just science on the beat. So I just got a really cool new sample pack. It's actually more of a composition pack. So uh, the Drum Broker online uh, has a bunch of really cool artists that create kind of old sounding compositions. If you've never been to the site before, check it out. There's definitely some really good stuff if you're like a sample chop type of producer. Um, I do it once in a while just to kind of like have fun. Uh, more often than not, I'm actually just programming MIDI and designing synthesizers and, and building out my own instruments and songs. But once in a while, I like to just drag a sample in and kind of chop it up like I was on my MPC back in the day. So I'm going to play this sample right now. I actually took the composition and broke out a couple of the stems. I bought the upgraded sample pack so it came with actually all the instrument stems for each of these compositions. And what I'm going to do is just kind of pick and choose a couple of the ones I like and show you what that sounds like here. See, I just dragged them in as audio, color coded them all the same, dumped them up in the top of my rack here. I will at some point go into the actual kind of starter template I'm working with these days. I know a lot of people who were really into the original template I built for reason six or seven or whenever the hell that was. I'm not exactly using that anymore. I'm using a really stripped down version of it and certain components and little tool sets that, that I really liked from that. But in the last few versions of Reason, I'm sure you guys all experienced this, the CPU processing just wasn't there, especially on my MacBook Pro. You know, surprisingly a very low quality of performance. So you, know, you might have seen some of my videos switch over to Logic and I've actually been doing a lot of producing and especially mixing in Logic, but there's still some stuff that I can't live without reason for. So, and I know a lot of you guys on the channel really want to dig into those reason tutorials and, and that's what I'm here to do. So I dragged in these couple audio tracks. You'll see they're just stems from a larger composition. I set the tempo to the 143 that the original composition was in, and I took the bass, a Mellotron, and a little kind of texture synth. So it sounds like this. The bass is dope. So that's the sample. Uh, I'm going to take a few pieces of it, loop it over, really add some drums, mostly drums to it. You guys will see kind of how I program my drums with a loose, sloppy, like unquantized feeling to them. Once in a while, I do like to heavily quantize my drums or really when I'm just building out a quick idea and dragging things into a grid, like it makes it easy. But if I'm ever playing my drums in or fine tuning the groove or the vibe, I definitely move a lot of my samples off the actual grid in order to get, you know, the real like groovy pocket in the drums. And if you guys don't really understand the pocket, pay attention, you'll probably get it. So what I want to do to start programming out these drums is listen closely to the bass groove and figure out like where's the real swag, where does it make you like snap your neck, and then kind of a lot of times I'll build a hi-hat pattern around there to make it like swing a lot and feel off groove but enough like sloppy but but still enough on groove to catch where the beat is and really kind of like feel the funk in the bass. So you notice like when I'm not into that groove, my head doesn't really hit or change directions on a solid grid line. And, and what that does is add that soul and that like real groove to the, the loop or, you know, the vibe as we would call it. And I want to accentuate that pocket in order to make people's bodies move, right? So I'm gonna start off by maybe I'll add a snap or something in there to really like lock down the the, the bars. And then I'll go through and I'll add a real kind of loose, heavily swung hi-hat pattern to really like emphasize that pocket. So 
So what I did was record those snap notes in and then actually quantize them to the 16th note grid. But what I'm gonna do now is zoom in a bit, turn off my snap and drag those notes just slightly off the axis of the grid to, to make them a little bit late probably late maybe i'll make them a little early we'll have to listen back but i'll probably make them a little bit later than the actual quantized groove and then we'll feel kind of like that loose sloppiness that that real like nice hip-hop drums so let's zoom in a good amount on these notes here you can see this one's a little bit off already i'll drag that on and just quantize it and now if i go through and select all four of the notes they're all active and I dragged them just a little bit behind the, the the line, the grid line of this 16th note pattern. We'll now listen back and see if our if our snaps are hitting a little bit harder. Right, so so the snap is a little bit late. It makes your it makes your neck kind of kind of pop a little bit when you when you're nodding your head and that will even be more accentuated and kind of reined in by the kick pattern and all the percussion instruments that end up in here and definitely the hi-hat groove that kind of keeps the the steady rhythm going so let's add that piece in now in my drum lane here i'm going to hit the comma key on my keyboard and it creates a new midi lane for me a nice little keyboard shortcut if you guys don't use that one now let's go pick out a hi-hat This might take a while. Here's some feedback for the propeller head guys. Put a button in here that lets me select just any sample at random out of the folder that I'm currently looking through. The ADSR sample manager has that feature and it's really cool. That might be it. You hear a little record pop in there? Okay, I'm gonna alternate between those two samples. Definitely got it in there somewhere. So it looks like this is the pattern right here. My first one's a little too sloppy, so I'm gonna, with the snap off, drag that forward a little bit. Let's loop this out and see what it sounds like. So now that I've found like the closest groove to what I'm looking for, and I segmented out a one bar loop of that, I'm gonna pull my loop markers in and let that one bar just continually cycle over itself until I can fine tune every single one of those hits. And I'll loop that out over the entire, uh, I think 16 bar loop that we have going on. So you heard once I turned the click off, it actually loosened up that pocket, the groove with the bass and, and, the, and that off grid snap, right? So when I was listening to the actual click, I could tell where my, you know, 
hard quantized notes should be, but I know my pocket's a little loose from there. So I line it up to be off of those, those click marks. But then once I turn that click off and can really listen to the interaction of the hi-hats, the snap, and that loose bass groove, then you really start to feel that pocket you know, working itself out. So let me uh, loop this little hi-hat bar over the entire sequence and we'll play that through and see what it sounds like. Okay, so I looped that out over the entire 24, 25 bars, it looks 24 bars that we're doing. And let's hear it. So now that I have that really groovy hi-hat pattern in there, I'm going to put a more solid like eighth note hi-hat in there with a different sample. I'm going to do something really light and short for this one. Again, I'm going to hit the comma key to add a new MIDI line here and go in and record this second hi-hat pattern. Okay, I see one of these is definitely off. And this one, uh, because it's a more kind of solid straight through, it's supposed to lock down the, the swing a little bit of that other hi-hat pattern. So I want this one to fall a, li a little bit more perfectly on the grid. I could even quantize it if I wanted to. And let me listen back and see how it sounds. Okay, that one's off. Okay, those all look a little bit better. Now you'll notice like some of them aren't, aren't perfect and uh, that's actually really good. So you should, re you should be building in some human error, right? Into these perfectly programmed drums. One of the things that makes organic music and kind of the, like the old school lo-fi hip hop sounds so good is that the drums are not perfect. And a lot of times when the MPC would chop up uh, a, a break loop or some other kind of sample, it wouldn't be perfectly at the attack of the drum. So you'll automatically get that loose groove in a quantized pattern. So if you don't want to go into this level of detail and actually write out your MIDI notes to have that kind of variation and that little bit of, of human error kind of baked into the programming, just find samples that don't start perfectly on the attack of the drum or even increase the attack level you see on the amp envelope here inside of the nano sampler on on kong you can actually increase the attack amount on that little sample and it will hit a little bit later than the original sample start time actually actually is you could also go into this sample start time and move that back if if maybe you wanted a, a kind of like more choppy attack and, and cut off the attack like some samplers did occasionally right so that's another way to add in that not exactly human error that's a little bit more old analog machine error but you know it still brings that special character and and uniqueness to your to your track so bake in those little mistakes into your perfect programming and it's going to sound a lot better it's more importantly it's going to feel better and make your listener you know groove and dance Okay, now the hi-hats have a groove, they have a swing, they're kind of finding the pocket of that bass, but we're still using samples, right? So, so it doesn't sound organic and, and human. One of the things we'll notice is that 
because I actually played these samples in on the MPC pads rather than programming and, and you know clicking them into the grid, I by default have all this variation in my velocity sensitivity, right? So there's an old video of mine from five years ago or so. I'll try to link the video in, in here somewhere. Uh, but I put out this little quick tip video that was actually a really good tip that I stumbled on one day that if you were to go and I'll do this right now if you were to go into your sample so this hi-hat that we first made kind of the swinging groove out of what we're gonna do is add multiple samples to that specific pad on the Kong machine and change which sample is triggered by which velocity level in my MIDI trigger right so what will happen is because of the variation it will play different samples and make it sound like a little bit more of an organic hi-hat so let's go through and do that and kind of you'll hear the difference and, and understand more what i'm talking about so inside the kong i'm going to go up here and add a layer with the hit number one sample selected click this add layer button and you'll see now i get another slot available in my hit number one sample spot. Double click on that slot there and now my sample picker opens up and I can change which hi-hat will actually trigger. Now the trick here is you want to get a hi-hat that sounds similar but not the same. Now we actually I had a second variation of that hi-hat sample available to me here. I'm not sure it'll be enough variation between the two sounds to really hear it. But one of the things that you can do is while you're stacking these samples, you can have, you know, three different kind of drastically different samples play at three different velocity levels, but you can have one or two samples that carry throughout multiple velocity levels and kind of glue the sound together overall while there's still like a level of variation in the sound above that that like root sample so again i'll show you what i mean by that okay so what i did is actually go and pick the two variations of the same sample from the same actual kit same hi-hat and everything and we're going to adjust the velocity a little bit so that as this variation happens throughout the midi you'll actually hear subtle changes in the two different hi-hat samples playing uh, one way you'll definitely tell is that there's there's record pop noises on each of the samples but they hit on different places and even though this is happening over like milliseconds you can still you, you can hear the difference okay so that's a really good way to kind of start out this process is you see how my dell hat 2 is capturing most of the velocity and realistically my variation is happening at the very top end of of this velocity change so nothing's going to change if i drag this line all the way down what what this line means is the start point is basically at zero in your uh, midi note um, sensitivity increments out of 127 don't worry about the math here just know that this is on the left hand side the absolute lowest you could play if you're like barely even touching the key and then all the way to the right is if you were to like program in a uh, full velocity or like on the mpc pad or some of the drum pads you can hit a button that says all of my notes will be full velocity but anything in between that range usually at the higher end of that range is where you'll find your variation if you play your sequences live into the midi track so what i did was have the hi-hat sample number two cut off at a certain level of velocity and then i left a gap before the sample one would actually trigger itself so what you're listening for by doing this is some of your hi-hat notes even though they're played in the midi roll the piano roll they will not be audible because in that specific velocity range where that one note hits 
there's no sample being triggered. So now you know, kind of, that's a good way to judge where's my threshold of range for velocity at my highest and lowest of what I'm playing in this sequence. And then I can start building and, and activating my different samples within that narrow range rather than this entire velocity area that I'm not using most of. So again, listen back to that and you'll hear some of those notes drop out kind of randomly. And now what I'm realizing is we did a one bar loop. So those notes are kind of dropping out randomly, but it's the same exact note that's dropping out every bar. So nothing wrong with that, but you can imagine if I were to play the whole sequence through or a longer loop of that hi-hat pattern, more than one bar, I'd have more variation and more kind of random dropouts of these notes. So what I'm going to do now is add a couple more layers into here and have them trigger at different velocities and we'll actually hear the full effect. Okay, so uh, I got the, you know, a rough version of what I'm going for. If I wasn't recording this, I would take a lot longer to actually kind of fine tune that. But at this point, this actual video recording has been going a long time. I'm probably going to have to cut off this tutorial now and make a second part of it, edit it all down into a better size chunk. But what you'll notice here is that we actually have five different samples playing. The Dell Hat 2 is kind of filling out the entire bottom range of our velocity, but again, we're not playing any notes down there. So really from about this point here, and I'm not sure exactly how you know what number what level of velocity that is here but right around that point of intensity the that sample stops playing if anything's louder than that and these other four samples will alternate depending on the variation of that midi pattern velocity now another thing you can do to intensify that and kind of cool because this uh, pattern was played in and then looped one bar over and over, we noticed that the same note was actually dropping out on every loop. But if I go into, and let me quickly just select all of these notes that we're working with right now, and go into my tool window, I can go here to note velocity, select random, and now, you know, right now that's set to 20%. That's probably a pretty good number to start off with, at least for the first try. If you look down here at these notes, velocities, if I hit this random, it's going to randomize by 20% up or down every one of those notes. Okay, so now you'll notice that this pattern doesn't repeat perfectly every bar anymore. Now, when we listen back, our hi-hat pattern and the samples that are actually playing are going to be a lot different and more randomized, more kind of natural, organic, human sounding. <laughs> So now imagine you took all of those samples, kind of tweak them a little bit inside of the Kong. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do the real fine tune mixing that you that would have to be done to, you know, really make really kind of sell this effect and not make certain hi-hats stick out a little bit too much. But if you were to pick a pack that has a number of different uh versions of the same hi-hat maybe the same stick or mallet and the same even maybe even the same drummer that's that's hitting that sample you can get this to sound a lot more natural as if it was recorded in one environment on one drum with one or two microphones and actually played live with that human error variation involved and now you get that more kind of organic sloppy 
natural, humanistic hip-hop groove that everybody's really out to get. Since this video's running really long and I went into a lot of detail on how to nail that groove and get the human variation into your hi-hats, I'm going to just kind of wrap up by adding a quick kick drum into here so I don't leave you guys hanging with a half-ass beat and we'll see kind of what we got out of it. you see how I played that in kind of really sloppy and off groove and once that final element came in to like weight down the drums and and really like let the hi-hats speak for themselves and show their how they're playfully interacting with the bass pocket and those nice offbeat snaps like now the pocket and the groove is really coming together you feel that glue and that cohesiveness any bit of like offbeat rhythms or things that were off the grid and noticeably wrong or you know not perfect in the computer world anything that was kind of standing out at that level before all of the drums came into play is now starting to subside and actually it starts to feel right and it starts to sound right and you say why does that have so much groove why does that like make my neck snap when I hear it and it's because of those imperfections, it's because of those mistakes and, and the sloppiness. And the more drums and the more sounds in the song that you add and build on each other with that little bit of perfect sloppiness, the less you actually hear it and the more correct or proper it sounds. So definitely don't count on quantize, guys. If you guys are are using quantize as a crutch, I like always preach this do not just turn it off or quantize and then go in and move things off of that quantize so some of your notes are perfect but some of them aren't and that's what makes it sound like you that's what gives it the soul and the vibe that nobody else can recreate and that's how you start to define your sound and what what sounds like you right so i know that video is probably pretty short especially once i edit it down but trust me i've been filming for like 40 minutes here and my camera is going to have like a 30 gigabyte file coming off of it plus all my screen capture and three different audio sources and stuff so uh hope you guys really enjoyed that video and learned a lot about it i have been programming and playing drums for a long time so i kind of have my my process down and I know what what works for me and what and what doesn't. So if none of this works for you, like, cool, man, that's it's this isn't not your sound. Right. But but this is this is the sound that I've kind of developed over the years and, and the process and the tips and tricks and techniques that I use to actually get that sound. So, again, just trying to share what I know with you guys. Let me know what you think about it, what what you guys do differently, or if some of you guys do the same thing, like shout it out. Let me know in the comments. If you're part of the Discord chat, like let's let's chat about it. Let's let's share ideas, right? That's what this is all for. So before I take up way too much of my camera space and footage, I'm gonna sign out and say if you're not already subscribed, click that button and hit the notifications bell. If you want to know when I post new stuff, give me a thumbs up. If you want to help me out with those analytics and I'll check you guys next time. Peace.